Hey Rangers, welcome back to another video and today we're back with the greater good episode of Power Rangers which is uh, season 2 episode 11. Now before I begin, spoilers, this video contains spoilers for this episode. If you do not want to know what's happening and you want to watch the American one then that will be out uh, in about in September time I think. Um, but yeah, so I'm just going to throw out again spoilers. With that, let's jump straight into it. Before we jump into the review, if you want to hit that like button, hit the subscribe button as well as that cheeky notification bell to be notified when more videos drop. And with that, let's just jump straight into it. We get a recap of what's happened in this episode, and it's not too bad, it's just very, very brief. Chaku is putting out fires as the rangers arrive, and we find out that Rijak has been um, taking and stealing Morph X. And it's been, a, I think, a couple of weeks uh, since the last one, so some time has gone by, even though it feels like it's like just a couple of days. They're all wondering what's going to happen and how they're going to take out Rijak. Now, Chaku says something really interesting, that there's a gang of thieves. So even though we know what happened with Rijak later on in the episode, it would be very interesting to know um, if more villains are going to come by. And what would be kind of interesting, as I've just thought of this now, is what happens if Goldar and Snide have been reanimated previously? and they're part of his gang. That would kind of make a little bit more sense, um, but I'm still also kind of sticking to what I said previously in the other video, that they just get part. And if you want to see that theory video, link is in the description down below. Chaku has said that he's getting his, uh, his ship, which is called the Reptilian Beast. So the Reptilo Beast is being brought to Earth by uh, the G5 police, so it's been sent um, from there. Um, it's kind of interesting because they say this much later on in the episode on how far the galaxy is from his home planet to Earth. But when you kind of see things a little bit later, it's actually, it doesn't feel like it's that far away. Commander asks Chaku if he would join Grid Battleforce after everything's been done. And after some sort of consideration, he's more like, mm -mm. if it's for the greater good, then yes, I will. Now in the cyber dimension um, or crystal dimension, either one. And Rijak's talking to Evox and everyone saying, hey, did you like the Morph X that I've delivered you? And I love Scruzzle when he goes like, yeah, we're tippy top. We're, you know, I love that sort of thing. Um, so everything has been kind of topped up and they've told Rijak where to dig for this. And he's almost at the range of ult to get all the range of weapons. So they've come to the conclusion that after Rijak's gone um, and he's done all the hard work, that they're going to keep all the range of weapons and et cetera, et cetera, and all the tech that they've got. Now, Evox starts getting kind of weak, it starts coughing because he needs more Morph X. Now, this is where we get the Ben and Betty moment. We switch to the grid battle force and Ben and Betty are helping Chaku kind of bring in all his stuff. And there's a plant that apparently is a man-eating plant. And you just kind of think, really, why would you bring that sort of stuff? Okay, ju just why? Um, so basically, if Ben and Betty move, the plant will eat them and then it kind of does and it spits them out because Chaku like sprays some sort of water or some chemical over it. And that is the kind of premise of that part, which we will see much later on, um, which then we switch to Chaku actually talking to his daughter over a communication like a hologram. And it's kind of cool. I really like that sort of effect. Nate kind of overhears everything. And uh, Chaku says, like, you know, he can't take off his helmet because, you know, he's still on patrol, etc., etc. And it kind of makes Nate remember about his family. Nate's told the other Rangers, and they're kind of wondering, hey, you know, how come Chaku said that he would join Grid Battle Force if, like, he's got a daughter who's dead far away? And they can't kind of figure this out. I do kind of like the little joke when Devin turns around and says, like, oh, does she look like him? And Nate goes, uh, does she wear a silver suit or a suit, silver helmet? No. And I, I, I th that made me smile. It was just kind of funny, like a little bit of uh, humor. As they're still talking, Jax kind of says, hey, did you kind of hear that? And they hear this rumbling sound. So what's happened, basically, they know that, that uh, Rijak and everyone is just underneath the base. And you kind of think you do it kind of slightly more quiet than normal. Um, so they're kind of like gonna grab everyone and rush under the base to see what's going on. Now Rijak is talking about saying like, you know, they've got to be faster, they're almost at the vault. Now if this was me, I would make an army of both putties and Vivix and get everyone in one big area and make loads so that they can go really quick that no one knows what's been going on. So as Rijak is talking about what's going on, um, the rangers kind of bust in, they shoot and get rid of all the putties and vivix, and then we go into a big fight. Now in this fight, basically Rijak is a tank. He, he literally can't be hurt, even with the rangers using their kind of like 
weapons at full blast, you know, doing combo strikes and stuff, it just doesn't really phase him. And at the very end, when they try and do the main big attack, it just literally hits him, he gets a bit of sparks, lightning comes off him, and then he kind of teleports away. The fight does last a little bit, which I do like, um, but then we come to a scene where Nate wants to speak to Chaku, and Chaku's on the really big defensive. He's like saying like, none of this is your business. You know, you saw this communication, you know, you shouldn't really be asking. And he's more defensive. Even his body language is really kind of like, hmm, I'm not gonna kind of move on this. When Nate starts talking about his past saying like, you know, he wished that he spent more time with his family. His family are kind of more broad, etc., etc. I generally was like, oh, this is like kind of Nate opening up. Chaku then decides to kind of reveal his secret. He takes off his helmet. And he says that, hey, um, I can't like go back because the uh, Galaxy Police, they actually made me into a cyborg. And you know, this is so I can use my powers, etc., etc. And Nate's kind of like stepped back. Chaku though, I've got to admit, it kind of reminded me more of like a Terminator se sequence where Arnie's being kind of like blasted in the face and you see the, like the kind of like the red laser in his eye and stuff like that. So it was kind of weird seeing this, but I kind of like the reference. As Chaku is talking about this, uh, about his choice, he says that he can't go back to his, his daughter because she wouldn't love him for what he looks like now. And you just kind of think, don't beat yourself up. You know that she's going to love you no matter what. With that, uh, Chaku walks straight out um, like he kind of storms out and this is when Nate's like, oh, okay. And he looks kind of disheartened. We come to the cyber dimension and this has got a lot of information that I kind of liked. So Rijak is talking to Evox saying, you know, I was inches away from the range of vault. Um, I literally have had bad luck, but next time is going to be better. And Evox is like, well, you know, why don't you bring your collection of ranger relics here? We'll sort all this out. We, you know, we can help you. And Rijak's like, nope. I'm not gonna do this. You know, my ranger collection or my ranger relics are on earth, they're in a spaceship and they're very, very hard to get hold of. So this kind of made me just think now that maybe we see some of the older relics, you know, some of the, like a gold ass sword, a pocket watch from Snide or something along those lines that kind of lead up to it. And Roxy and Blaze like, oh, so his ship's on earth. I wonder if we can, I wonder if we can get that. As Evox turns around and says, you know, we'll help you, uh, you're gonna fail on this. Rijak goes, nope, I'm not, I'm gonna go defeat them, etc. And he, he kind of teleports out. Now this is when uh, Evox says like, you know, oh, you fool, you know, your precious collection is going to be mine. And I really hope it's like a vast big ship, not just like a small um, ranger vault like Nate. I would wanna see like a whole giant room full of Power Ranger tech. That would just be absolutely awesome. And I kind of wish that in the next episode where if Ryan Jack survives, that he was able to kind of talk about this and go through it as like Blaze and Roxy have found the ship. You know, they're pulling up weapons going, like, how did you get this? And it's kind of like, as much as I hate a flashback episode, I would love it if like you saw that they filmed original footage of Ryjack taking weapons from the rangers and stuff like that and adding it to his collection and you saw like maybe one thing where he's picked up the uh, uh, an spd blaster or something or you know something that is from mystic force and just kind of explained saying that he took down this ranger and then like took with their stuff that i think would have added to this whole like series to make it amazing but at least a ranger fan could dream on that one rijack's been spotted downtown uh, the commander tells them to go after that. Um, Devin says, hey, Chaku, you'll get your, your wish now. And that's pretty much it. They rush downtown to fight Rijak. The Rangers find Rijak. They exchange some banter. And I just love, like, uh, Chaku. He's just standing there as the Rangers morph, like, I, I don't know what to do. What do I do, guys? I'm just going to stand here. But there's no kind of emotion. Like, you think that he would get ready, like, kind of, like, pose. Uh, for the runoff when the rangers actually get like powered up. Rijak is about to actually bring in some more help, but Chaku jumps in and he knocks the uh, reanimator out from his hand, which then hits the floor and a fight uh, or a sentai fight kind of like kicks in. And we see that uh, all the rangers actually take out parts of Rijak really easily to kind of disarm him so he can't really do anything. 
First his shield goes and then his sword goes. As everything's been a coordinated attack, the ranger's saying, hey, you've got nothing left. Um, that's it, you're gonna do absolutely nothing. Then Rijek brings out this uh, thing which actually makes him grow from the ruins of Andragia. So I'm wondering if that's kind of a reference from uh, Super Sentai or from Gavin. If you do, no, let me know down below in those comments. With this, he actually grows into a giant monster. And do you know what? I kind of missed this. We've had Giga Drones, we've had loads of different robots, but actually having a monster grow and actually fighting the Rangers now, that to me was something like kind of special. That's what I generally really liked. I love the fact that the Rangers are scared. They're like, oh my God, what the hell? Um, and they all rush off. And you kind of think though that the Rangers would know that back in the day, monsters did grow. And that's what you kind of think, oh, okay. With all this, Chaku is the only one left and Scruzzle teleports in and he steals the animator, which I knew that they would do. It was either gonna be Evox or Scruzzle. And I was just like, yeah, there we go. Oh my God, there we go. Now with Scruzzle stealing it, I really do hope they use it more than once. Uh, sometimes you find out that mostly in Power Rangers or at least Beast Morphers, when they use something that's amazing, they, don't, they only use it once and that's it. It's like it has a one trick shot. Uh, especially since the Rijak could easily have given the virus to the other rangers that immobilized Ravi and Zoe in the previous episode. One thing that gave me a nostalgic kind of uh, thought and feeling was this kind of first little fight where the rangers have summoned the Ultra Sword, they're fighting Rijak, and Rijak disables them completely. As the rangers couldn't do anything as the Ultra Sword has been knocked down, when you see Rijak walk towards it, it made me feel like back in the day when someone would take out the uh, MMPR Megazord or the Dragonzord, where they would go, oh, I'm, you know, we're being defeated right now. And it was that impending danger, which I was just like, that's what I want to see a bit more of. Chaku has now got his Reptilia Beast and is there about to fight. Um, I thought that there was like a Megazord mode or something like this, but there isn't. It's just this dragon that goes along and kind of kicks the crap out of Rijak. Chaku uses the Enforcer Inferno, which then basically makes Rijak kind of fall back a little bit. And we see that the Rangers have now got their kind of energy levels back up and they're ready to fight again. Rijak uses the same sort of move again against the Rangers, but unfortunately it doesn't work. And soon he is defeated, which I generally was saddened because I actually generally really like this bad guy. This, this monster was awesome just because of his Cockney accent. We get a scene back at Grid Battle Force where everyone walks in the room and Chaku's like, I can now like retire and I can join you at Grid Battle Force. And pretty much that's it. Um, he doesn't sound very kind of enthusiastic as they kind of point out and they say, hey, we've got a gift for you. Follow us to the lab, which they do, which is like the kind of warehouse lab where we see the device to create their own Power Rangers. Now in this scene, they explain that how the Power Rangers are made, like how they mix, how they mix the DNA of animals to create Power Rangers. But what Nate's done is he's reversed it. So he should be able to take out all the cybernetics uh, for uh, Chaku to turn him into a human again. They reverse the process and Chaku gives Nate a hug, says, thank you very much. He asks one last question, like, do you want me to do anything? Have you got any questions before he leaves? Seal jumps in and says, can I have Reptilitron? I, I thought that was kind of a little bit funny, like really? Um, but it was kind of like a cheeky moment. They're like, no, forget what Steel says. Like he doesn't really mean it, but you know Steel meant it. You know that he wanted it. Now we come to the last scene and this could have been the best scene that they could have had. So Ben and Betty have kept the man-eating plant because Chaku said you could have that. You kind of think that you wouldn't because it will never be seen again. Um, I do like the reference that, um, that Steel makes about Spot saying that he misses Spot and wish that the plant that they had which again was kind of a nice thing that they added. Um, they found out that if they could feed the plant um, like rubbish and trash and it, you know, it eats it, but it spits out recyclables. But it's the very end that they get another communication. And this communication is basically Chaku and his daughter. And his daughter says, thanks Power Rangers for returning my dad or something like that. It's basically a very quick message. But again, he got home really quickly. So I think that basically when he was like, oh, it's too far away. You know, he was hoping that Grid Battleforce would be like, oh, well, oopsie, you know, you can't do it. He's like, God damn, I only live in the next galaxy across. It takes me like three seconds, but this takes me a whole three minutes to get home. Um, so again, it just, you kind of think that maybe you would have had the transmission in the next episode at the very end. 
but that's pretty much the episode. It felt like there should be more. So my final thoughts on this. I generally thought this was a very weak episode. Um, I generally really wasn't that hyped up. I mean, the putties and the Vivix are fine. That's what I liked. Um, but I generally just thought that there could have been a bit more kind of leading up to it. Um, one thing that I generally would have really liked is if like the last mission, you've got Chaku in his, like the, his ship and suddenly he's being attacked and you just hear maybe like Goldar's laugh or Snide's laugh. You know, something to kind of be like, oh my God, with the distance that it takes, I think there should have been something like, you know, oh, he's going to be with you in a couple of hours or a couple of days. They're on the way. We couldn't stop them. And that's when it kind of builds up. You know, I think that would have been more like just thinking of that alone is getting me more excited than this entire episode. Um, I just feel like it was more kind of, oh, it's over so quickly where Chaku could have stayed for a little bit longer. Uh, in the next episode, he disappeared. He could have said, oh, Rangers, um, you know, just go, go look for Ryder Jack's ship. It has something that you may need. Something to kind of bring the audience to go, oh, what's happening in the next episode? What's happening? I need to know, I need to know. And then bring it out like that. It just feels very kind of, ah. Eh. It was nice seeing Chaku's ship. And it also, that feeling that you had when Ryder Jack was going after the Ultra Sword, that to me was really nice at the same time. But I think, to be honest, like this episode was kind of weak. It wasn't as strong as the previous episode. So I'm hoping that all the episodes that we have, this is the weaker one that we've got. But yeah, uh, I'm gonna leave it there. Those are kind of my thoughts. What are your thoughts if you've seen the episode? Uh, what did you think about it? Was it everything that you wanted? Uh, and also this means that if you watch it in September in America, then the same question still applies to you. So I'm gonna leave it there. Thank you very much for watching. I'll be back tomorrow with another episode review as these uh, are going on for quite some time, uh, and which I'm very much looking forward to. I hope the next episode's gonna be a little bit better. So yeah, I am gonna leave it there. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this sort of content and you wanna see more, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, as well as that cheeky notification bell to be notified when more videos drop. Thank you very much for watching Rangers, and I'll see you in the next video.